thank you for being here. Um, we're, we're trying to be innovative. We're trying to think about the curriculum. And I'd like to ask you, as SROs, can you talk a little bit more about what you enjoy most about being an SRO? I think for me is to listen. It seems like every kid has a story. Yeah. And just to hear their story, you know, because you see this kid all the time. And then when you've made that connection with that kid and then they open up to you, it's like, oh my gosh, the things this kid have been through. The kids, I love the kids. Um, the group of officers I work with are also a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it fun every day, you go in. When I graduated high school, I was going into education. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's, that was my whole basis. You know, I tell the kids, you know, you know, you got two ears and one mouth. Which one is more, you know, which one are you supposed to use more? And, you know, I get in there and these kids are like, you know, Bradley, you worked the streets prior to this. How many people have you tased and, and, and things like that? Mm -hmm. I said, I've never tased someone. I've never pepper sprayed someone. And they're like, why? And I, I tell them, you know, we're all unique. So it's us listening in all trauma that we've had to deal with, whether you work in a row or being in school, is that what that child is dealing with or had to go through is the most important thing to them. And there's nothing that's that's tops that. So it's listening, getting on a level, and letting them speak their mind. You, you like working with the youth and families. Um, you like probably the challenge, maybe the dynamic nature of your, your job, because each day is a little different. A lot of the students that you work with have trauma in their lives. Mm -hmm. They might have ACEs, adverse childhood experiences. The one positive comment you say or interaction you have with them during the day might be the only positive aspect. I've been at the mall um, in Lexington, standing there shopping, and a kid come by with his mom and they go, Mom, that's Officer Fox. They gave me a hug. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wait a minute, this kid ain't never <laughs> hugged me. You know, sure, what's yes. going on here? Uh -huh. So to me, that was a moment for me um, to put in perspective that, you know, that kid thought enough of me that I could hear him from behind say, hey, that's Officer Fox. And all of a sudden I get this big bear hug. Mm -hmm. You know, here I am out in public and this kid is acknowledging me. Oh, so we have this, had this little girl last year. She's still outside our office. And she said to all of us in there, she's like, I would be caught dead sitting in that office with all you 12. Now she won't leave. <laughs> <laughs> she was that kid that would skip class. She would come in with tales to regale us. Like, oh, guess what I was doing this weekend? I was drinking and I was driving, all this nonsense. Mm -hmm. And she would yeah. like, she would pull out her vape, we take it and be like, we, we talked about this, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was just, she was just terrible. She was, one, she was one of those kids I did not like, but we just let her stay in the office. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, and we would try and mentor her, be like, you can't do that, yeah. try and help her on. Yeah. This year, she completely turned over new leaves. She was like, I stopped drinking, because you know, I don't like it anymore. She stopped hanging out with the friends that were leading her down, pa down bad path. The friends were like, hey, it's a school night, but let's, let's just drive to like Richmond or something. And she's like, no, I got school tomorrow. Mm -hmm. She was she, in structure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> she wanted that structure. Yeah, she did. Yeah. She said she stopped vaping, because she was like, I was a trans. I, I had to stop, because I couldn't walk up a flight of stairs without dying. <laughs> oh. wow, 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 she's wow. super polite now. She's an, she made a turn. She has made a turn. Like she, I'm sad to see her go for when she graduates this year. Yeah. Yeah. I go in every morning, and as our high school, middle school kids come in, They'll catch me singing and, you know, dancing. I'll have a couple of teachers say, Bradley, you always have something good. And I said, because I don't know what that kid's dealt with at night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, that, them saying come in, I'm talking to them, singing, and that might put a little bit of smile on their face mm -hmm. and, you know, may, may open them up to even come talk to me and say, you know, it's going to be okay today. You know, that perception, you want to show that uplifting, I'm, I'm here for anything you need. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. so that's why I try to do is be that positive light and, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and having fun cutting up with every one of mm -hmm. them. I've got students that, come and they won't say two words for me, with me. And I had one yesterday in my class I was teaching and she would not speak to me. Before yesterday afternoon, I said, I will have you talking to me before this year's over with. <laughs> I went and sat with her at lunch. By the end of the day at dismissal, she was talking to me. Officer Bradley, I really appreciate you coming. Every kid in my school have been there in that category. So it's so good to see them come over there and 
they feel like they belong. 